there guys, gals, and non-binary pals, Jam Potter here. Welcome to my channel where I review books and bookish things. I upload on Thursdays and alternating Tuesdays, but this month, the month of October, I am doing the 13 spooky books of October. So in addition to my regular upload schedule, I've got some more sprinkled in throughout the month. Today's book is Never, Never Whistle at Night, an indigenous dark fiction anthology. Uh, it's edited by Shane Hawk and Theodore C. Von Alst Jr. So let's get into it. So this book is hefty. Um, it's made up of 26 short stories, all from an inv all from indigenous writers, and um, the, they, they focus on uh, various aspects of indigenous life and folklore and religious practices and things like that. Um, my top three stories all come from the middle part of the beginning. Um, the first one is White Hills by Rebecca Roanhouse. Uh, this one is my favorite out of all of them. Um, it's remnant, uh, reminiscent of Stephen King's Quitters, Inc. Um, if you've read Stephen King's short story, Quitters, Inc., it's about a guy who tries to quit smoking and there he finds this company that's like, we'll get you to quit smoking. Oh, you have a 100% success rate. And it being Stephen King, the twist is murder. So it's, 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 it's a good story. It's kind of stomach churning. And this one is the same, same feeling. Um, it's, it's different. It's, um, a gal who is, um, part indigenous and she's dyed her hair blonde. She's married into a wealthy white family. She has a, a BMW. She lives in a gated community. She gets to go shopping. She's a kept woman. She's just living what she feels is the dream life. She has what she feels is the perfect life. Well, she makes the mistake of saying that she's part native and apparently she hadn't disclosed this to her in-laws and what do they ask her to do to keep her perfect life what do they ask her to do what would you do to keep your perfect life once you've gotten it and it's just ugh. what would you what would you give up to keep your perfect life would you give up your heritage would you give up a body part? You say you're part Native American. Which part? Oh, it's so good. So, 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 so good. So good. It's my favorite one in the whole book. I, I've read that one twice. Um, second, um, actually introduced me to a new concept because I wasn't being non-Native as I am. Um, I wasn't familiar with the concept of quantum and quantum blood. Um, which refers to what percentage someone is Native American, the higher percentage, the closer to quantum, quantum being like 100% pure-blooded Native American. Um, this one is, is titled Quantum. It's by Nick Medina. Um, and when a mother has, a mother has two sons and she moves back to the reservation and she wants them put on the, on, on the income stream from the local casino. And so she has them tested, I guess, has, and one of them comes out a much higher percentage and he actually gets a check put in a trust for him and the other one doesn't because he's a much lower percentage. And I guess the dad, the kids have two different dads and she treats the one who's a higher Native American percentage lovingly and she buys him his first moccasins and all of this and like she tries to steal the blood from a, an elder who passed away because he was quantum and like I guess she was wanting to preserve his blood because it's special and in the meantime her other son is neglected and mangy and walking on all fours like a dog and just turns into something else not someone else something else and it's just Ooh, ooh, it's creepy. It's creepy and it makes you think about these things that she never really cared about until money was attached to it is kind of what it feels like. I might 
I might not be coming at it from the right point of view. Um, I acknowledge that. But it's just... It was stomach-churning the way she treats one kid over the other. Because the other kid is, is there the whole time. He's following Mama around. And it just... Ugh made my stomach feel sick and in, in, in horror that's a good thing um yeah number two was quantum um number three is wingless and this one i can't really get too much into without giving away the whole thing it's um by marcy r rendon it's a first person and reflective it's kind of slice of life-esque we open on her watching another character pick the wings off of flies and it's just stomach turning and just ooky feeling, which again, for horror is great. Um, very well written, very tight, very tight prose. Like everything feels authentic, feels genuine, feels like this is a real character. Like so many first person slice of life stories, especially horror stories, feel very wooden or very cardboard or very formulaic. This one feels very natural. Um, the prose is really good and that's what the story itself I didn't really care for but the prose is so good that it, it it's got to be my third favorite um, but like I said there are 23 other stories in here um, yeah are you ready to be unsettled is the question on the back of the book um, highly recommend it especially if you like anthologies if you're looking for a horror anthology this is a good one um, it came out this year it's uh, got a 4.32 on Goodreads I give it a hearty five stars and yeah check it out let's give them some love and expand our horizons in a horror sense um, have you read Never Whistle at Night um, are you familiar with where the title comes from um, it's actually taken from several um, belief structures in North American native culture that uh, whistling at night essentially draws evil to you that you're essentially you're entering the dark's domain and drawing attention to yourself and you're letting the evil whatever that evil may be know that you're there and so you're drawing it to you so never whistle at night um, highly recommend it have you read it uh, let me know in the comments down below don't forget to like share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one bye